Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Sarah Liz and today I have another emergency card kit for you. If you're new to the channel, these are some of the emergency cards we've made in the past couple of kits. And the idea is that we make a bunch of cards that have space for the same size sentiment, but we leave the sentiment off. Then when an occasion arises, we can choose the style that fits the person we need a card for and a sentiment that fits the occasion. And it just makes that card stash of ours a little more effective, a little more efficient. To help you create your emergency card stash, on the 1st and 15th of each month, I come out with a new emergency card kit. So this is volume six, and we are saying thank you. So we have some sweet thank yous at the top. You are the best, thanks friend. Thank you so very much, all the thanks with gratitude. And then on the bottom half, we have some sassy and funny thank yous, thanks and stuff. You are freaking awesome. Thank you from the bottom of my butt. And then that's from Dottie. Dottie, help me again. Thank you so much, Dottie. Um, there is an inside that goes with it. I'd say my heart, but my butt is bigger. Dottie's from Australia. So this is the version that is the American spelling. But if you use British or Aussie spelling, um, there is a separate download for you where I have changed the spellings. If I missed anything, please, please let me know. I'm a little bit out of my element here. And so I, I think I know what needs to be changed, but I will update anything if I missed it. Um, there are a couple other insides. So this one says, most thank you cards say thank you only once. This thank you card says thank you four times. Boom, manners. And we have two fonts for that because I couldn't decide. I liked this one better, but this one feels more masculine. And then this, but don't let it go to your head. That can be used with a bunch of different ones. You are freaking awesome, but don't let it go to your head, right? Thanks a million, but don't let it go to your head. Okay, so these are sentiments and I have them with a circle around them. I like to use my EK Success one and three quarter inch circle punch. And then I just slide it in here and I wiggle it until I can't see the circle. And then I know that it's centered and I punch that out. But you certainly could use a die. And there's also a page that does not have the circle in case you are not using a one and three quarter inch circle. Or if you wanna cut it out in a different shape, there's certainly room um, to do that on a lot of these. Next, we have our card template. And this one, I've been wanting to make this card template for a long time, but was struggling a little bit with how to teach it in a way that was easy. I don't ever want to bring you something that's so complicated. People don't want to do it. And I finally figured it out. I'm very excited. There are guides for cutting here. There is also a cutting guide on this page for the card base where to cut and score. But I will demonstrate all of that. We're going to make three cards together today um, so I can show you ways that things might change if you're using double-sided paper or if you're not and how to make the most of your paper and then I'll show you a bunch of other examples. I, like I said, I've been obsessed <laughs> with this design um, and I couldn't wait to show it to you. To get started on our card, I have a card base shown here in the gray matte layer that is cut to nine and three quarters by five and a quarter. And then I have a single piece of six by six pattern paper that is double-sided. And these are non-directional patterns. I'm gonna cheat a little bit with this one. There is a little bit of text on the bottom. I don't even know if you can see it. I'm gonna cover up that part of it so that we're using the part that is non-directional. If you use a double-sided piece of paper that is non-directional on both sides, you can make the entire card out of just these two pieces of paper. This card can fit in either an A2 envelope or in a mini slimline envelope. Let me show you that. So here's my A2 envelope and this is the card we're making. Here I've moved the circle. I really like it at the top, but when I do that, it's too big. The card itself would fit in that A2 envelope. It's just the circle that's overhanging. But if I had put my circle here, like in the sketch, it would fit in the A2 and I could even have elements hanging off the side. If I want that circle at the top, then we're talking about a mini slimline card. A mini slimline card will fit in a six and three quarter inch business envelope. So these are envelopes that I just got at my local grocery store. So it's a six and three quarter. Um, and I used these for quite a while, 
but I didn't like that on the back, I don't know if you can see that on the flap, you can kind of see the adhesive coming through. So I wanted to upgrade to something a little nicer. So I got these on Amazon and I like that they have this flap here that makes it look a little bit fancy. This is a number seven coin envelope and it is just slightly narrower you see that slightly narrower than the six and three quarter, but the card will also fit in this envelope. Okay. So either way works. It just kind of depends on how you want to decorate your card. To make our card base, I'm going to use the cutting guide that shows you the same size that I already cut. And we are going to cut on the diagonal from the five and a quarter inch corner down to two and a quarter inches. That's two and a quarter from the bottom of the card, this flat part up. This is a different size, so be aware of that. I'm gonna take my card base and if I just lay it right on top of here, I have printed mine at 100% and I can use this as a guide to find that two and a quarter inches. So I'm right here. This up here is the piece that I am removing. I'm going to use my trimmer and I turned it sideways so you can see the entire ruler. I'm going to slide this in here and here's my top corner. So I want that right in my track. Okay, I'm going to put my thumb on that and then I'm going to rotate until that pencil mark at our two and a quarter is also in the track. I'm double checking and I'm going to close that. I am going to slide my cutter from this flat side to the corner. If I start at the corner, I will bend it. So I'm just gonna slide and cut that piece off. Okay, this is my card base. I'm gonna save this. I can cut either my two inch circle punch or whatever shape I want to die cut out of this leftover. It fits pretty well right here. Next, we are gonna score at three and a quarter inches and six and a half inches. So I'm bringing in my big scoring tool and I have put the right angle of my card up into the corner and here's three and a quarter and here's six and a half. To fold my card base I am going to use my score lines and fold like an accordion. So this first score line here will fold towards our tall corner and then this score line will fold the other direction. I am just checking to make sure things are lining up evenly at the bottom. And I am gonna bring in my bone folder and I am gonna give those a good press. The cardstock I'm using is really heavyweight. This is 100 pound cardstock from Tailored Expressions, which to me feels like a little thicker than 100. So it will fold nicer if I do it this way. So that's my card base, right? That's pretty easy. Next, we're gonna work on our pattern paper. So I need one piece of six by six pattern paper and I need to cut it in half at three inches. On my pattern paper, remember, I have this little bit of text. I wanna make sure all of that is on the same three inch strip because I'm gonna cover that up. I'm gonna make sure that's the part that I am gluing to my card. Next, I've got to decide which side of the paper I want to be showing twice. I like this floral design better. So I'm going to plan for that design to be on the back and the front. And then I'll use this yellow design for the middle. We want to do the back and the front first. So I'm going to start with the back. And I have a piece of scrap cardstock. This is a quarter inch wide. And then I just have it so that it's a little bit shorter than three and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna add some removable tape and I'm gonna line this up right at the bottom, okay? I want it to be taking up a quarter inch of space. So I'm gonna add a little more of that removable adhesive, adhesive up top. And then I am gonna center my pattern paper so that I have that equal eighth of an inch along the side and then between the pattern paper and my score line. Okay, I'm gonna press that down and then I can flip my card and I'm just gonna use my scissors and trim along the top. Okay. 
I am going to wait to glue this down. But essentially what's going to happen is I will remove that piece at the bottom and then this will center beautifully on that back panel. See how perfect that is? I always want to make sure that everything fits before I go gluing my panels down. Ask me how I know. We're going to do the front next. So I still have adhesive on this little strip and I'm going to add it to the front and I'm just lining it right up along the bottom. So I'm add adding my removable adhesive and I will lay this right on top. I'm centering it between the two sides of the card. I'll press it down. And then I will use my scissors once again just to trim off the extra along the diagonal. So we have one piece left to adhere. And keep in mind, it doesn't go right here. It goes here. If you want, you can use this same strategy to add a piece of white cardstock here for writing your message. Um, I will probably wait on that. Sometimes I like to use my white gel pen or uh, like a silver pen when I'm using dark cardstock. So um, if I need to later, right before I send it, I will do that. So I have lined up my little piece of white cardstock. I'm adding my removable adhesive. And then you'll see this lines up. It's just a little taller in some places. I'm just checking the angle. But in theory, this one should fit perfectly. Okay. So I'm going to double check it. I'm going to take that off. And when I line that up, that looks pretty good. Now that I know everything fits, I can start gluing my pieces down. So when I add my glue, I am going to make sure I go all the way up into that corner, that narrow corner. Um, and I'm going to try to make sure that's not going to squeeze out over the side. I like wet glue for this. That diagonal is really obvious if it doesn't get lined up right. And so to me, it's more important to get it right on this top edge than it is to get it right um, at the bottom. And then we'll add our front piece. And then we'll add the back. I love this paper. To me, the paper is the hero of the card. So I'm not going to add any ephemera to it. I really just need a place to add my sentiment. So I already cut out a circle using the Spellbinders Fluted Classics Circles. I love this one a lot. Um, so I used the three smallest dies. This tiny die right in here, that's one and three quarters of an inch. It will cut out your sentiment beautifully. And then this is the fluting, which is all on its own. And then there's a circle that will cut out that fluting. So I cut both of those out. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Um, but I also want to point out that this fits, number one, right on that leftover strip. Um, but you could also just cut out your two inch circle. So this is an EK Success two inch circle punch. I like it because it's faster than die cutting, but really you could use a die as well. The sketch has it right here. And actually I kind of like that. Um, if I'm gonna add just the two inch circle, this placement works really well for me. This one's really too big for that, right? The cart gets kind of swamped, but I could add this at the top. Tell you what, I wasn't going to, but let's add Let's just do this one. So I am going to figure out where I want it and then I'm going to put my thumb and my forefinger right on the edge. So I'm only going to add glue where it's going to overlap the bottom. Okay. And then when I come back to this, I know that I am not going to glue my card shut. And that's it. So that is my card. I am going to add with temporary adhesive one of my sentiments. So this is what we have. Um, and I think I like this thanks and stuff. That's very me, like just thank, thanks for all of it. Um, I have a page that I've already been working out of. So I'm gonna use this one and this is my one and three quarter inch punch and I'm just gonna wiggle that until I can't see the black line. 
and there's my sentiment. I like having something on there so that if I'm in a real rush, right, I could just grab that and go. So there's our card. You can add a white panel. Remember, just cut it the same way we've been cutting these other ones. Put your um, little strip of cardstock at the bottom and then use a three inch strip of white and cut it on the diagonal and it'll fit beautifully. Okay. If you're not using double-sided pattern paper, the way to make the most of your paper is to make two coordinating cards and fold your accordions the opposite way. So here my tall corner is on the left and here it's on the right. I used two pieces of six by six pattern paper and got two cards. Remember when we created this one, I put that panel on the front, that flower pattern, and when I cut it, even after I rotate it, the tall corner would have been on this side. I only got to use it because I flipped it over and used the back side, the yellow side here, okay? So we're gonna make a pair of cards together and I will show you how this works. Um, I also wanna point out real quick, this ephemera is from the So Happy card kit. This is an old one. Well, you can now buy um, like just the ephemera and they have it on clearance. So I got all of these for $3.50. And then I got the coordinating pattern paper, which is like a whole pack and you get two of each sheet and there's some gold foil details. That was also $3.50. So I will try to link it below if I remember, but just there's tons of separate elements on the clearance rack right now from Spellbinders. And then this butterfly, you guys, this butterfly. These are the Floral Friendship Butterflies and they're stickers, right? The piece in back, that butterfly in back is gonna stick flat and then the acetate pops up. I have tried to flatten them. They don't stay flat. It does not want to stay flat. It's so pretty, but it mails almost perfectly flat with no extra postage. So those are really beautiful and I love them a lot. Spellbinders did set, send me those for free, but I was thinking about buying them anyway. So I just got lucky on that one. Just like before, I'm starting with a piece of six by six pattern paper and I'm gonna cut it in half. And in fact, I have already cut a second piece in half as well. Next, I'm gonna take my template and I'm gonna line up my card base and I am just gonna make a mark at two and a quarter inches and I'm gonna bring in my trimmer and we're gonna cut that diagonal, okay? So I'm sliding this in and I'm remembering this is my tall corner. So I'm gonna put that corner right in the track and I'm gonna rotate until my pencil mark is right there as well. I'm gonna slide the trimmer blade to go through the flat edge of the paper, not through the corner at least not starting through the corner. And that is my card base. I'm gonna bring in my scoreboard and I'm gonna put the right angle of my card into the corner and score at three and a quarter and six and a half. I did this twice. So I now have two card bases. I am gonna fold them this way, okay? So if this long flap went over to the right, this long flap will go over to the left. I am folding them opposite each other. That is how we're gonna make this work. So all of our pattern paper has a place to go. The front flap will finish the accordion. These four pieces are all the same size, but I am gonna start with my front and middle sections instead of the back section this time, okay? So I have my quarter inch strip and I'm gonna stick that down. I still have sticky on the back from the first set of cards and I'm adding my removable adhesive and I will line that up so it fits, okay? I will bring in my scissors and I will cut right along the diagonal, okay? Then this piece should fit perfectly in the middle of this one. You see that? It wouldn't have fit over here because the tall corner is going the wrong direction. 
But since I'm making two at a time, it's perfect. If you don't want to do that, okay, you have another option. I actually think on this navy piece that I would like a pop of color. So I am gonna set this one aside and let's bring in a piece of colored cardstock. So I embossed a piece of 65 pound pink cardstock ahead of time. And I thought this might be a really nice accent because I wanna keep this card pretty simple. So again, I'm gonna put my little one and a quarter inch scrap here and I will put some removable, removable adhesive and I'm gonna line this up in the middle. You could try a heavier weight of cardstock, but this is a pretty thick card anyway. There's just, we've got three layers to our card base and then three layers of pattern paper or whatever you're using. So for me, 65 pounds seemed the safest option. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna trim the back the same way I would if I were using pattern paper. So if I didn't have or didn't want to make two cards, I could use my two pieces to cut for the back panel and the front panel. And instead of worrying about the fact that my third piece didn't fit, I could just use some solid colored cardstock. You wouldn't even have to emboss it. But let's go ahead and finish this one up. I'm gonna pull that off and I'm gonna add it to the back and add my adhesive and I will set this on my card and just center it right in between. And then I will do the same for the front. Now this one's important because this front piece, the leftover is gonna be the middle panel on my teal card. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna double check, right? Remember I cut this off of here, I rotate it and it fits just beautifully right there. So I still need to cut my back piece and then I will glue everything down. off I'm going to add a circle for my sentiments and then I'm going to add a few die cut pieces but you could use ephemera you could stamp some elements maybe color something in when I am die cutting especially florals I always cut a bunch and then I just save my leftovers so these are from a floral explosion mother's day card I made for my mother-in-law and then these are from um, a shadow box card that I made for my mom for Mother's Day. So I will try to link those videos if you are interested, but I'm trying to put all of my die cut pieces to use because I just keep them in little tubs by my desk and they are overflowing. Um, I know that for these, I want my circles to be at the top. So I'm gonna do that first, right? And I'm just using my finger trip to make sure I get my glue only where I want it. I'm gonna wiggle and get everything kind of centered in there. I'll do the same over here. Here, I, I'm gonna keep this simple. I really like this embossing. I don't think I wanna cover that up. So I think I'm just gonna add like a single flower and a leaf right here that ties everything together. All of these florals are from Spellbinders. It's a combination of the Be Bold Blooms, which has been on sale a lot lately, um, and the Club Blooms that was the January die set of the month, the large die of the month, but you can still get it even if you didn't um, order that in January. So I am gonna add just a quick sentiment that is temporarily on there in case I am in a hurry. So I like this, thanks for being the person I overthink things with. Um, there are 
many, many coworkers that I could give that to. Um, so let's just add a little bit of adhesive and I will center that on there. I also think it's good to look at it with the sentiment because it changes the color balance, right? The whole card brightens up once the middle of that circle is white instead of blue. You guys, it's so simple and so pretty, right? You could put a bunch of these together pretty quickly. Let's finish this one up too. Um, because all of that is the same pattern, I think I'm gonna lay a few flowers out and maybe decorate a couple of places. Like what if we do like a something like that? When I'm putting florals together, I like to start with the piece in back since I will otherwise lose sight of the shape that I'm building. And then I try to create a trio, right? Or odd numbers. So I'm gonna stick that little leaf down and then we'll add this one. And I'm gonna be careful with this one. I don't want it to come up too high and I don't wanna glue it shut. So I have two petals where I have to be really careful with my glue. So I will start there. And then for this one, I think I'm gonna use this with gratitude. I'm going to add my temporary adhesive and I am going to stick that right at the top there and center it up. So there are our two coordinating cards and because we changed the color of the card base, you wouldn't even know that we started trying to use up the same pattern paper, especially when you switch up the color on one of them. So we made these two cards and then this first one with our double sided pattern paper. Uh, we looked at these two cards where we used ephemera instead. And I love, love, love those butterflies. So I made two more cards where I really tried to stretch outside my comfort zone. Here I've used the Friendship Floral die cut pieces. Um, that's another new release that Spellbinder sent me. I just thought they were really pretty. Um, but then these are my sentiments. And this one, I just ran through my mink machine with some gold deco foil. Um, because there were gold accents. I don't know if you can see the shine on those. There's a lot of gold accents in this collection. There's also coordinating paper um, and all kinds of other pieces, some beautiful foiled sentiments that go with this too. Um, but I just wanted to stretch outside my comfort zone a little bit. I hope you like these cards. If you are interested in this free printable with all 16 sentiments, both with circles and without, you can download both the American spelling and the Aussie and British spelling for free. It also includes the insides, the sassy insides, as well as the card overview that has a two scale template of the card, complete instructions, and then the cutting guide for your card base. All I ask is that you subscribe to my channel. So click the subscribe button and then click more or show more to unpack the description below the video. And if you scroll down to the very bottom, there are links to both files. If you know someone you think might like to make cards like this or who might like some free sentiments, please share this video, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you next time.